thank you all for joining us tonight. We're going to talk about a book that celebrates friendship and perfect pairings with this pair, Peggy Panache and Susie Ahrens. Another perfect pair. <laughs> so in her professional life, Peggy has a pair of careers, a marketing expert, and an illustrator. Peggy's worked with some big, big name celebrities, notably Oprah, <laughs> the biggest of the big names, and on some big name events like the Grammys and the Super Bowl. Peggy's traveled the world, like seriously has traveled the world, and now makes her home in her favorite college town and mine, Madison, Wisconsin. Susie is a strategic communications advisor and has worked with a plethora of bold print names. Over her 30-year writing career, she's worked with everyone from Netflix and HBO to the Tribeca Film Festival and Radio City Music Hall. Susie grew up in Ohio, attended a different Big Ten school. <laughs> and the now good one. the good one. <laughs> Mich Michigan State. It's a good one. And now she calls New York City home. So here we are to talk about billions of besties. So, ladies, what was your intention when you set out to create this book? Peggy, you take that one. We, um, so I was actually uh, on my way to Susie's house um, last summer in July. And I was listening to NPR. I was going out to her house to hang out at the pool. And I was listening to NPR. I was listening to an interview with Beanie Feldstein. And she was talking about the book, movie Booksmart. And she was talking about friendships and how they studied friendships. And I started thinking, God, friendships, friendships. Wow, there's so many, you know, and I started thinking about like my own friendships and I started thinking of like TV friendships and it's like, God, there's a lot. And then I thought, and then I was thinking, you know, besties, billions of besties, blah, blah, blah. And I got to Susie's house. And as we often do when we see each other, it's like mid sentence. And I said, Susie, how about a book about friendships? Let's call it billions of besties. And like we hit the ground running. So, you know, our, our intention was one, to see if we could actually do it and to create a body of work that was just super positive. Right, Suze? Yeah, I mean, I think part of um, the thing that happens with Peggy and I is that we have this sixth sense and we have been friends for such a long time. And when she came in to the house and was just talking about how inspired she was by the interview, and we just start riffing off of one another and we talk about the enduring friendships that we have. And we were just talking about like, why did the friendships last? What is it? And we were trying to figure out like, what is that magic? What is that sparkle? And, and we finish each other's sentences and, you know, looking back at those qualities that make a great friendship. And then we started riffing. And the thing that happened is we were sitting by the pool and my husband was supposed to have um, uh, uncovered the pool and we couldn't get into the pool because he was, um, he was doing something else. And that was annoying. So we just had to sit and, and talk, which we never have a, a problem sitting and talking and so it just kind of mushroomed into this whole thing and so um uh but what was what was uh great was that it just blossomed and we thought okay we have something here can we do a book because we don't know how to write a book because we never wrote a book <laughs> so, so how did you how did you meet what? How, how did the two of you meet and were you BFFs at first sight? Yeah, yes, we were BFFs at first sight, <laughs> but we met um, uh, working on a comedy festival and Peggy worked for one of the radio uh, sponsors and I worked on the, um, with the producers and the organizers of the comedy festival and Peggy's one of the funniest people in America, maybe in the entire universe. So um, true. And um, I uh, am a really good audience. And but, so you know what? We also, though, this is this is a this is another besties connection here because we had a there was a, a guy named Chris, oh. and he knew Susie, he knew me, and he also knew Jenny Lerner, who is also on the Zoom. 
And we didn't really know each other. Um, Susie and I had met at the comedy festival. We really like liked each other. We thought, you know, I thought she was hilarious and great. So Chris started doing these dinners and it was, we used to call it girls night out with Chris and he would bring these women together could be, you know, maybe what, six, eight of us. And um, we've all become really good friends. So it was actually this guy, Chris, who really kind of helped cement our friendship. And here we are, and Jenny and, uh, and, and Peggy and I, and we're, we're all still together. That's fantastic. Mm. Well, thanks for Chris. Um, so how did you choose and research the besties in this book? How, how many pairings are in here? There's about a hundred, there might be 90. The hard, one of the hardest things in the, about this was the, was the list. Cause the list was very, very, very long. And we wanted to be sure that it was, um, that it was broad and that it reflected lots of different categories. And the original list was probably three times this size. And we wanted to be sure that it um, wasn't just pop culture, that mm -hmm. it also reflected music and art and, um, and was fun and that it was, um, it had a little bit of gravitas and it was interesting. So that was something that we did. And then um, as far as research, um, I just tried to be very New York Timesy about it and make sure that we, you know, that there were always at least two um, or three sources of research uh, it, um, uh, source, sources. So it wasn't just going to one place and going, oh, okay, that looked good. I had to really make sure we verified everything. Okay. So was there that you didn't, that didn't get into this volume? Oh, there's a lot, there's a lot of crumpled paper. <laughs> and there were pages, because there was, um, you know, people that were in the book, and then it was like, whoo. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody that you scrapped over? Anybody that almost ended your friendship by not getting in the book? No, there's, there is a person that we um, <laughs> constantly, there was, uh, that my friend lobbied for quite diligently, and, uh, and, and that person is still not in the book. She will go unnamed, but I, I worked hard on that. But, you know, another fun thing that we did, though, is, you know, we crowdsourced among our friendship circles, um, you know, so we sent out an email to our family and friends, and we asked them who were best the pairings that they love. So, you know, like my sister, Abby, who's on, was the one who suggested Carl Lagerfeld and Chopat, which made the cut. So... You know, there, so it was, you know, there was a, a, like, you know, a lot of love and like good energy that went into not only curating and compiling, but also like, you know, getting ideas for, um, well, there's like macaroni and cheeses in there and it's debatable <laughs> on whether they are friends or colleagues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, like cheese is kind of can stand alone. I didn't mean to say that. I did not <laughs> seriously did not mean to say that. Exactly. And being from the <laughs> there's a lot of opinions about cheese. So, you know. Well, you know, a, a bear noodle is... Mm. Um, okay. So, did you did you have any surprise friend, su surprising things in your research, Susie, that you just didn't know about famous people that something that still surprised you, even though we think we know everything about famous people? Yeah, there were two, there are two uh, pairs that were most surprising um, for me. One, one pair was Helen Keller and Mark Twain and, um, and uh, Marilyn Monroe and Ella Fitzgerald. Ah. And that, both of them for different reasons were uh, surprising and wonderful. And Marilyn Monroe really was, um, extremely important um, and pivotal for Ella Fitzgerald as far as, far as her career. Right. Um, and she, and you'll read in the book, um, that uh, if it weren't for her bringing all of her friends to the club, um, in the club in LA, she, Ella Fitzgerald would not have gotten in the club. And um, 
and she also, you know, came in the front door. She was very, she was a huge advocate for Ella Fitzgerald, um, and would not, um, she, it would not, it, Ella Fitzgerald till the day she died, she, she credited Marilyn Monroe for her, for her career. You know, and that's, that's why this book is so fun is it's, it's a delightful book, but there's so much, so much interesting, um, information in it too. So I love it. Okay. So <laughs> here's a fun question. When you originally thought about doing this book, there was no pandemic. And as you were creating it, there was a pandemic. How did that affect your views on friendship? And how has uh, the pandemic affected your, your friendship? Mm. You know, I think you know, it's interesting, um, you know, time being, uh, timing being everything and the universe being kind of complicit in, um, you know, sort of helping us create this body of work. When we, um, when we were working in the throes of working on it, I was actually on tour with Oprah and Susie was in the middle of a, probably the biggest career change um, of her career. Um, so we were create, you know, I was, you know, drawing on airplanes and texting images to Susie and, you know, she was writing as she was traveling all over. So it was, it was really crazy, but, you know, we never lost sight of our intention that it was to create this really, you know, beautiful body of work. Um, when the Oprah tour ended at the beginning of March and, you know, COVID happened, I was still in New York and I decided to leave and shelter in at my sister Polly and brother-in-law Stewart's house in Sister Bay, Wisconsin. And that's where I finished drawing. And so Susie and I were probably on the phone five times a day, every day. So I think for us personally, it brought us closer together because we were each other's lifeline. And this body of work was something that you know, I could get lost in. I mean, I literally took over their house and it turned turned it into my studio, um, but was really able to get lost in these, these drawings and, um, you know, was really became a really positive way for me to not only express what we were creating together, but also it was therapeutic. It was just really happy, delightful work to get lost in. Um, I think that, you know, the pandemic even, you know, underscored that creating a body of work that is positive and that is delightful and that is about goodness and celebrates differences and also what connects us, that alchemy, that magic that Susie had mentioned earlier, that it took on an even greater importance. So, you know, it felt good that when having this book come out now, it's like, um, you know, a little piece of light that is, it's, it's a um, kind of lifts your soul up and it helps energize good vibes. And um, it, it, you know, it just, it feels good that, um, you know, we could, we can share this with the world now. Yes, absolutely. Carrie. Sorry, Susie, did you have that same kind of feeling? Yeah. About how it, you through the pandemic? Yeah, I mean, when we started it, we, we didn't know what was going to happen. And we had, um, we created this North Star of Words that we used as, kind, as our guidepost. And it was really important to us um, that we stayed positive. And so this- Susie, look what I found. Oh. Oh, I love that. Isn't it so cute? Yeah. And, you know, just in, in, when we created it, you know, we were thinking, oh, we're going to go on tour. It's going to be so fun. I bought dresses <laughs> thinking we were going to go to Wisconsin to Arcadia and read. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and I was in the midst of this, this career change and which was, uh, you know, stressful. So, so the research and the writing and the collaboration was really um, cathartic. And then it became um, uh, even um, more celebrated. It was more important because 
um, we were so isolated mm -hmm. and it helped get through the fear, but we were so, um, we, there was so much noise going on around and also we didn't know what was going to happen. And in the Northeast, we were hit so hard and the writing and the research allowed me to escape because we were on lockdown for three months right. and you know we it was it was really quite uh frightening my kids had moved home and we didn't see anyone and so i have the luxury of having a really lovely home and beautiful uh green uh grounds and can look outside and sun and whatnot but i didn't see i i went six months without seeing my friends yeah. and you suddenly appreciate your friends and i miss my friends and so i got to talk to jenny and i got to talk to peggy but i didn't see them so you really begin to appreciate your friendships and now i was researching friendships and these very long friendships and then very, sh very short friendships. Bette Midler and Julianne Moore met on the set of The Glorias, the, a movie they were filming, and it was an instant friendship. And Penny Marshall and, and Carrie Fisher had a lifelong friendship that ended when Carrie passed away and, and Penny passed away. And there, so you just, be, you just really, our treasure those moments. And so what I also, what also happened during this time is that I started to reach out to people that I hadn't seen. And my, one of my dear friends is on the, from high school and she's really my own one, one of my only friends that I've stayed in touch with from high school is Cheryl Smith. And, and she and I have been friends since seventh grade. And, um, you know, you just appreciate those connections. And now Peggy moved back to Wisconsin and Cheryl lives in Wisconsin. And I was so happy that they got to meet each other. In and front of Arcadia, by the way. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what's so, I don't know, it's a little kismet or something that Cheryl and Daniel are two of our favorite customers, so. It's because of Cheryl that we're doing this. Yeah. And, and so I'm so happy that we're, that, that that happened, you know, and so, you know, this, this weird circle of, but you just really, really um, appreciate it. And during the pandemic, the only friends that I've seen, I went to Jenny's house um, out at the beach and, you know, we did social distancing and her um, daughter's are on the call also Kate and Lily. They were, you know, flower girls in my in my wedding. Like it just it just reminded you how important those connections are. And Peggy's going, you know, God forbid anything happens to me, tragically she will be my husband's uh, replacement wife. Like, you know, these are all things that they these very important things. You have to, you know, cultivate and maintain these things. <laughs> so, you know, it's, um, but the pandemic just kind of brings all of that together and reminds us, and that didn't exist before this. So hopefully the book um, just reminds people to take care of your friends. Right. To, to kind of go back to basics a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So d after, after doing all your research and work on this book, do you consider yourself friendship experts? I don't consider myself an expert in anything, um, but I think that, um, what do you think, Peggy? <laughs> you know what, here's the thing. I think that we're good friends. We're really Meaning, friends. like, you know, I, uh, I'm not an expert, but you know, what I do value is, you know, what it means to be a good friend. Yeah. And, you know, that, you know, I look at like my sisters and my brother-in-law and my niece who are on this, you know, they're my best friends. They have my back. They're always there. I look at Allie, who's on this call, who I've known for a million years and we are on tour together and she's a total karma sister. And, um, you know, I, you know, I value, 
you know, I, I value her values and her energy. And, you know, that's what attracted me to Susie too. You know, it's like Susie has such a strong moral compass. And, um, and also I think, you know, the through line with, with all of my friends, you know, Kara, who's on this call and Hillary, who's a new and cherished friends. But, you know, I think of, and <laughs> through line is humor. And, and being able to make light of situations that are sometimes super dark and super d difficult to, to be able to find, you know, sort of that little nugget of like humor to lift a mood and carry us through. Um, so I wouldn't say I'm an expert, but, you know, I, I appreciate um, good and dear friendships and I know and, and, and how meaningful that is to me and also how important connection is yeah you know especially now i think that you know through the um you know through zoom and through screening we've been able to stay close to people who are very far away and you know with susie and i with you know our process of creating this book this is this has been our connection um so uh and, you know, nothing, nothing takes the place of that physical human connection, but um, it is, uh, I have a, a renewed appreciation um, for the friendships that I have. And I think the other thing that we, we do, because it's just part of who we are, is we fight for, um, we fight for our friends and we always have done that and we fight harder and even with the, with the book, there were things that we have fought for. And there were moments in the, with the book that, you know, you don't always, we've never done this. And so um, there were some things that the, um, our publisher who are wonderful and they put up with a lot of questions from, from both of us that we didn't know how to do, but we also knew that it was important that it was right and we wanted it to be right for us and the respect for the friendships in the book. And so we fought for things and just, you know, at the, at the front of the book and the back of the book, we listed all the people who were important to us. Like we didn't wanna just have, you know, in the dedication or an acknowledgement. So we listed all the people that were important to us. So there's just a list of all of, like our friends. <laughs> and that was important. And they were like, what? Yes. What page would that be on? We're like, I don't know, but it's gonna be there. It's it's small writing because there you had a lot of people to acknowledge. Yeah, it's there. Oh wait, no, no, no. Wait, Nancy. Yeah, I'm, 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 like, it's, look at the end pages. The end pages. Those are all of our friends. Oh, those are too. Yes, <laughs> friends and family. <laughs> Friends I love a good end page. Yeah. <laughs> Although imagine what it's like when we realized we forgot somebody. Oh, it was terrible. Yeah. And it was like, I, oh my God, I thought you could. I, mean, I thought, thought you got. Oh, wait, I you, then you see that you save this spot for them. Specifically. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Peggy, to talk mm. about the, the artwork. Which is just fantastic. I mean, amazing. I, I, I just love how someone can can do a, a line drawing and you know exactly who it is. <laughs> That's some okay. talent. So, um, was there anybody that was difficult for you to draw? Yes. So there, um, Bill Murray was really difficult to draw. Uh, but I think you know. I think. Oprah was difficult to draw because I work with her, you know, so I was like, I had to get that one right. I think, you know, there are some days um, where the, my, it flows and there are some days where it just didn't. And, um, you know, my most creative time is in the morning. So, you know, I'll drink up, have, do my meditation, have coffee, and then I'll start drawing. So sometimes it just works. Sometimes it didn't, but I would say Oprah, just because, you know, I, I wanted, you know, what. I wanted to make sure I, I got that one right. I think Bill Murray was difficult uh, to capture that. Um, let's see, who else? I, I, I don't think 
you change, remember you changed, was it Beyonce's hair or Kelly Rowland's hair? You oh, changed. I changed Kelly Rowland's hair <laughs> because, <laughs> yes. So I would go back, yes. So I would go back and do things like, originally I had this like ponytail Afro thing on the top of her head. And, um, you know, then when we saw the um, first pass and, you know, I would look at some of the drawings like, oh, that doesn't work. Oh, I want to change that. So, um, and it was great because, you know, I worked with the art director when we laid out the book, we actually laid out the book first and then I would draw the drawings. So we knew in advance, like which pages would be spreads, which, which pages would be, you know, like, um, like the, you know, the Ruse Paul illustration takes up the whole page. So, so we kind of choreographed, you know, what the layout would be. And then I created um, the illustrations to sort of fit the cadence of those pages. Right. And, and, you know, some, um, yeah, so some worked and some didn't. Um, some people, um, like it's interesting, Dwayne Johnson, I drew him and then we actually worked with him on this tour. And uh, when I met him, you know, I was probably staring at him like a super fan nut, but I really wasn't. I was just staring. It's like, you know, his head has a little bit of a bump at the top, you know? So um, <laughs> I wanted to capture that. Can I just say my, <laughs> don't get mad at me. What? So Peggy on the um, Anna Winter, Roger Federer one. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're going to say. <laughs> so she, she wanted... <laughs> She wanted Anna Wintour to pop, so she, so she wanted her to pop, <laughs> and so, so we everything was done, and then she goes, you know, I think we have to make all the background people really just in the background, so just make everybody gray. <laughs> so really okay, yeah. so she made everybody gray except Anna Wintour. It came back, and we're like. I don't think that's gonna work. Yeah, it was great. Anna Wintour popped, but it was just like eh, that didn't work. Even I knew that didn't work. I can't do. I can't do anything. <laughs> that ended up looks great to Anna. Yeah. Yeah. Just glasses on. <laughs> so okay, so when you start with a drawing, do you start with like their most distinctive feature and work from there, or always with the eyes? Always with the eyes, okay. The eyes are always first. So okay. I'll usually do um, the eyes, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, and then depending upon whether it's just the head or the full body picture, if it's a full body, um, you know, I'll maybe outline the body and then start bringing in color. But I, I work with a micron, 0.02 pen, which is my favorite. Um, so that's sort of, that's kind of the, that's the line work that sort of brings, initially brings it to life. And did you, um, did you study art or did you? No, I just started drawing three years ago. So I, uh, yeah, I, so I, I like, you know, I was into art in high school in fact, my sister Polly and her husband Stuart have one of my watercolors from like June, like a junior in high school in their foyer. Um, but I wasn't even a doodler at work. And like uh, about three years ago, I went to New Mexico with two super close friends of mine. And we did like, you know, sweat lodge, vision quest, that whole thing. And um, it was, you know, at a time in my life where I was really open to change, but I didn't know what it was. So we were working with the shaman who kind of like cracked us open like eggs. And um, one day, you know, so, and we were there, we were with, you know, doing this for a week and it was all guided. And, but um, she came up to me, I was sitting outside on the property under a tree and she handed me a paintbrush and some pens. And um, I started doodling and it wasn't good, but I liked it. I was like, oh, okay. And it sort of ignited something that was familiar. It's like, hey, you know, I used to, I used to do this. And um, 
so when I got back to New York, you know, I went to my local art supply store and I got some, you know, watercolor pens and started playing around and started feeling, you know, um, what kind of pens and brushes and paints I like to work with. Um, and then I just started creating stuff. And then I started um, posting stuff on Instagram and people started liking it. So then um, I was, I am a CBS Sunday morning fan. And so I started drawing suns and I thought, you know, I'm gonna send them, I'm gonna send them some suns because they use suns as interstitials on the show. So I Googled and found out that there was a person whose job is producer slash sun coordinator. <laughs> so I sent them a bunch of illustrations and she emailed back. She said, oh my God, we love these. And they started using them on the show. So then it gave me a little more confidence. Um, and then, um, you know, I started getting more illustration clients and you know, made, really made it a practice to draw every day. Um, and yeah, you know, it's like with anything, the more I do it, the better I get and the more I like it and the more adventurous I become. So, but yeah, it's very, very much a new thing. But you know, it's interesting. Susie was never a writer before. So what was, you know, interesting about this experience is that, you know, we were always professionally, I was always one thing, a marketing person throughout, you know, my career and I never knew that, um, that I wanted to do this or even could. And, um, so, you know, I think it's a neat lesson to anybody. It's like, you don't know what you don't know. And, um, you know, uh, it, was, it was fun to be in a place that this, this could come to life. That's, that's crazy, ladies, that you just know. pull that together just on the side. Mm -hmm. So I, I also love um, CBS Sunday Morning, as does my BFF, Natalie, who works at the bookstore. Um, and that leads me to my favorite pairing is, <laughs> is Mel Brooks and Carl Reiner. And they're often on, or used to be, they, they would be on CBS Sunday morning. But I love how, how Ernie and Mel's and Bert's and Carl's ties coordinate. I'm so glad you caught that. <laughs> I love it. That's one of my favorite details in the book. <laughs> well, yeah, they're my favorites. And then my other, my other favorite, Mary and Rhoda, Sam and oh, Child. Right. I had to love those two ladies. Yeah. So what's, what, can you pick a favorite? That's probably like an impossible thing to ask, but. One of my favorites is um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Antonin Scalia. And, and, you know, I think especially now because, you know, what I love about their relationship is that they were polar opposites in what they believed um, however, you know, they loved each other's company and they had such beautiful common ground and shared experiences. And it is such a lesson that, um, you know, differences don't have to separate us. And that, so I love, uh, you know, so I love that I love them and I love that pairing very much. You know, I also like, I, in a weird, like, I also like Hunter Thompson and Pat Buchanan for exactly the same reason. They were as opposite as opposite can be, you know? I mean, like, tr like arch conservative, liberal, you know, he was nuts, but they spoke to each other like every day. Um, and so the fact that they could find like common ground and really like enjoy each other, even though they were so very different, I think is really, really uh, amazing and magical and a lesson. And that that's the one that the uh, the legal department at uh, <laughs> at Simon and Schuster challenged me on five times. They absolutely did not believe that 
Hunter Thompson and Pat Buchanan were friends. And I had to, I had to actually give them all my notes. I had, it was crazy. I'm like, what? This makes no sense that you do not believe this. And I gave them all my notes. I was furious. <laughs> I just made this up. Well, you know what other one I like? This one, Queen Elizabeth and her corgi. Yes. Corgis. <laughs> and she, Susie, what are your favorites? Um, my, a couple of my favorites, I love um, Toni Morrison and Fran Lebowitz. Mm -hmm. And uh, part of the reason I love them is they are so different. Um, one, you know, uh, Toni Morrison just is, Toni Morrison is, was a party girl and she just loved, but like junk food, loved the casinos, her, the, you know, she just did not like the whole urban living, which Fran Lebowitz just thrives on. Um, and Fran Lebowitz just used to park herself in Toni Morrison's office because um, Toni Morrison was an editor and she was just enthralled with her and she almost got her fired because she wouldn't, because she, she, she interrupted her working. So I was like, no, no, I gotta, I have to work. And, you know, uh, Fran Leibowitz is only, she's, she is, um, she does a lot of short stories, but she is, she's only done a couple of books, but she is, um, she's very dry and uh, she is, um, she has a style that's very um, uh, predictable. And Toni Morrison was very, uh, was very fashionable and um, they're, just their whole physicality was very different, but they just loved each other. And they, um, so I just loved, I loved that part of their story. Um, so I, I, I love their friendship. I love Bette Midler and Julianne Moore. I just mm -hmm. think that, I think that friendship is going to last for the rest of their lives. So I just, I, I love everything about that friendship. And I love the, um, I love the squad, the Eddie Murphy, Dave Chappelle, Tracy Morgan, Chris Rock squad. And um, there's so much reverence for Eddie Murphy. And he really had, the, the, um, the other comedians that have come after him have so much respect for him. And he really disappeared for a long time up until last year. And he was so, and he's very sensitive. And I've worked with him um, I've been fortunate a couple of times, but each of those comedians in their own right are so talented and they just love to be around each other and they like, they love comedy and they love, they love um, the art of comedy and they love each other and they just um, have so much fun together. And so just being able to write about it was wonderful. And, um, and so it was just, that one was really, that one was a joy. So, um, so those, that, those couple. All right. Well, let's hear, um, let's hear from some other people. Um, if you have a question or if you want to talk about your favorite pair or, or lobby for a pair for the next, for volume two, um, why don't we do it? We're not going to do the whole fancy, like literal button pushing. Let's let's actually do, I should say, literal hand raising and just unmute yourself. Don't all speak at once. <laughs> Go, Todd. Am I unmuted, Nancy? Yeah, you're good. Well, <clears throat> one of my favorite things about this book when I finished at two o'clock in the morning is that it brought me back to my old buddy. Can you hear him? This is just one of my favorite things. I hadn't seen Buzz Lightyear in 10 years and he's in his COVID packaging. And unfortunately I drank him under the table earlier. But the other thing about this book that I just was perplexed by, what is the story of Charlie Brown and Snoopy? There's a qualifying statement there that I have not completely digested. 
Well, they are um, <laughs> oh. competitive and Snoopy, Snoopy's tough. Yes. Snoopy's tough. And I can't, I can't speak for Snoopy. Can you go, Susie? Um, I can only, I can only um, tell you that I didn't want to get sued by Snoopy. So um, I felt like I needed to just qualify it because um, I didn't, I didn't want to get into the crosshairs of Snoopy. Oh. This this conversation over the pairings did not come up often, did it? No, I was more frightened of Snoopy. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's that a, explains there's it. Baron, Todd, there's a Red Baron situation. All right. <laughs> Just leave it at that. Okay. Well, thank you. That's all I can say. We should move on. <laughs> move on. Move on from Snoopy. In yeah. case okay, Snoopy's listening. Okay. <laughs> Does anybody? Well, I see, yeah, I mean, I, I see Snoopy. Just right now, I just got, I'm a little nervous now. I see Snoopy in the lower <laughs> corner. He is listening. <laughs> well, he can fly a plane. He could be there shortly. Um, oh, I have like a question. Yes, please. Is since you wrote the book, is there a friendship that you wish you could have included that since the time that it's been written or been published, um, you are now thinking about, oh, that would have been a great friendship to include? I, you know, I wish that, I don't know who his best friend is, but I wish we could have included um, Dr. Fauci and his best friend. Um, and I just would have tried to figure out probably somebody on the Washington Nationals is his best friend, but I would have liked Dr. Fauci. Peg, who would, Peggy, who would you have you liked? You know what, Kobe, uh, Kobe or LeBron James, probably the two of them because they were friends and it was such an interesting friendship. And, um, I think that would be a really fun one to draw and explore. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's funny. It would be really fun to go back and re revisit some of the cutting room floor stuff. Yeah, we we had um, there were there were a few people that we just we had to put in. We call it our parking lot. <laughs> there are a few people in the parking lot that that. Um, that we wish we could unpark. Um, you know what one that um, we, we talked about was Michelle Obama and George W. Uh, because yeah. they, they, um, they developed such a sweet relationship starting with the passing of the candy. I think it was at John McCain's funeral. But that was such a moment, you know. Um, I, like, I like that relationship a lot. And, and I, I, you know, again, you know, I guess there's a theme in the, but, you know, it's like, I just love opposites, you know, I, I, and I think it's heightened, especially now. Right. To, to choose, um, you know, it's, it's easy for me to say, oh, my best friend's another 50 year old woman to, to pick somebody that's like totally opposite of me. Yeah. You know, that's, that's an interesting interesting friendship yeah yeah and there's you know i think you know what you know through these in you know in looking that you know you i learn that you know what it is that really binds people and it's not political beliefs or religious beliefs you know it's it's like values and respect and um you know treating people decently and compassion and empathy and um, goodness. I have a question. First, congrats, <laughs> Peggy and, and Susie. Um, I'm curious, and you touched on it a little bit, but the, through your research um, from both of you, what's like the common thread, if you could sum it up in just one sentence that makes 
an epic friendship and an, a long lasting friendship. If you could just, yeah, sum it up in a couple of words. What, what is it about all of these duos that they all have in common? You know, I think love, oh. you know, in some way, shape or form, there's love. Either it's a big love or a new love or a fleeting love um, or, you know, uh, but there is, you know, I think that that is, um, you know, a sort of connective tissue that is um, a through line in a lot of these friendships Except for like, I, like, you know, chips and guac, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like spaghetti and meatballs, I'm not a hundred percent on that one. You know, pizza for sure. Peanut butter. Uh, for sure. Yeah. Um, but, and also I, I, and you, I, Peggy, Peggy said it earlier, there was, there's humor and, and, um, the ride or die, which is the which is big love, but I think even on the new friendships, there is that knowing that no matter what, that person is going to be there. They are the person you can call in the middle of the night, and they will they will be there. And I think that was one of the things that was really. Um, that, that came through on all of the research was that quality of just dependability and that love was, love was the given and then you're my person. You're my person. Hillary, that's a very good question. You could tell Hillary hosts um, a really interesting um, award-winning winning interview show. So you we can have our publicist call her. Yeah, you can see her journalist chops right there. Love you I guys. have something to say if you're if you're done. Um, Zia, she said, was an old friend of mine, seventh grade. We just quickly became such good friends. And we have remained friends throughout the years. But there have been many years we didn't speak to each other. Not that we were in a fight. It's just that we things got in the way. But we've just kept up our friendship. And we touch base every so often. And I'm just so proud of you, Susie. Aww. And I, I loved you then and I love you now. So thank you so much. Thank you, Sharon. It was so nice to meet you, Peggy. And I also want to say something about Arcadia Books in Spring Green. It's the most amazing independent bookstore. It's just a wonderful place. And thank you so much for being there and hosting this. Well, Cheryl and Daniel um, are prolific readers and <laughs> they kept us going we, we were sending them packages weekly multiple times a week sometimes so so thanks thank you to the to all of you who who kept us going too and and polly who is our work neighbor across the street has also been a great great bookstore supporter so polly yeah everybody's doing this now <laughs> so um Sus Susie and Peggy, what do you? What's coming down the pi pipeline? What do you have next for projects? Voting. Yeah. That's what we have next Every for projects. Week, yes, we all of our energy is uh, is about getting people out to vote, um, making sure that people understand the issues, and that if you. Um, the last day to register in some states is this weekend, but even with, with the, with the um, book uh, publicity and social postings, it's all about voting and making sure that people understand how important the down ballot voting is as well as up ballot. And so um, I think between the two of us um, and our day jobs and our 
mid, I don't know what the middle job and voting is our third job. It's just consuming every minute. And so, um, you know, raising money in battleground states, raising money for the core five and the core four, five and six, um, getting young people out. Uh, and so I just, the, the, that is what's up. I can't even think beyond November 4th. Two weeks from today. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for your support. And we are trying to support independent booksellers across the country. And so the fact that you invited us for this was so important. And I just um, thank you. And thank you, Cheryl, for, um, for, everything and for also um meeting peggy i'm just thank you for that yeah so, i know we, we we still need to do our picnic point hike <laughs> and nancy and todd really thank you so much nancy thank you for guiding us in this conversation today you're awesome it wasn't hard to do it was just oh. having a conversation with friends so it yeah was for sure and todd I, I was so charmed when you said you were up until two o'clock in the morning reading the book, that just made my heart sing. So thank you, that's really lovely. It's the best book to read at that time of the night. Thank you. <laughs> thank you all. Thanks everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, Panache, Ross Miller, family, everyone. Hi, Pam. <laughs>